Zoom in a little closer and you will see the United States of America. Remember, Lawrence County is in the state of Tennessee and I've marked that with a little red star. Today we're going to explore My favorite thing about First Lego League is the teamwork. Probably being with my friends. And we get to make it real. That's my favorite part. And we get to play for Legos and build it real. First Lego League is one of three engaging FIRST programs. Participants gain real-world problem-solving experiences through a guided global robotics program helping today's students and teachers build a better future together. First Lego League introduces STEM to children ages 4 to 16 to inspire young people to experiment and grow through critical thinking, coding, and design skills through hands-on STEM learning and robotics. First Lego League is fun. Students can't wait for this part of the day. They're teaching inclusion, teamwork, how to be creative and think outside the box. Children can join at any division based on their age or grade level. First Lego League Discover is a playful introductory STEM program that ignites students' natural curiosity and builds their habits of learning with hands-on activities in the classroom and at home using Lego Duplo bricks. I build a supermarket. I, I build a fire station and I even put a kitchen so the firefighters don't get hungry. We build all kinds of stuff that we could that we could help our community. In first Lego League Explore, students focus on the fundamentals of engineering. Students explore a real world scientific concept, build a model, and code it to make it move using Lego education technology. They are able to do a lot of learning through play. All of a sudden, the students will have those aha moments. So I was like, oh, I know how they build the robots now. When it works, I'm very happy because we worked really hard. We get to share our ideas and build off of other people's ideas. It's just like really cool and like so cute to see them being all excited and happy. I feel like when you're young and you find that, it like follows you along as you grow and so that keeps you motivated to do things. Friendly competition is at the heart of First Lego League Challenge. As teams of students ages 9 to 16 engage in research, problem solving, coding, and engineering. Our students are creating something new every single year and they're learning about all of these things that you would never see in a traditional classroom or curriculum. First Lego League Challenge has three components, the core values, the robot game, and the innovation project where you're able to solve a real-world problem. 
first LEGO League is about more than robots. It's about solving problems that are bigger than they've ever imagined, thinking outside the box, and being excited to be part of a team. I am first. You'll say first. First is my family. First is the best thing you could be. First is discovery. Innovation. Impact. Inclusion. Teamwork. Fun! Me too. Whoa. Dude, I think it's been days. Do your legs give out because you've been marathon video game for, for days like the youth of today who lead sedentary lifestyles? Being inactive is no joke, and Dr. Michael Goh from Ohio State University has found that extreme gamers who spend 48.8 hours per week playing games are at risk for thrombosis, or otherwise known as blood clots, from prolonged sitting. It was crazy how Brent's legs were like rubber when he got up. He was walking like a pretzel. Since when did they make shoelaces shorter? They didn't. Is obesity stopping you from doing your daily activities? Well, you're not alone. Recently, the CDC reported that 18.5% of kids in the United States aged 2 to 19 years old suffer from childhood obesity. This statistic is even higher for adults at 42.4%. What episode are we on? I have no idea. I think we're on the second episode of season seven. Season seven? How long have we been watching this? Three hours and five days. My eyes hurt. Are you okay? How much clear eyes do you go through to soothe your bug eyes from binge watching TV and excessive computer screen time? Eye health is no joke, and inactivity due to long periods of time looking at TV, computer, or phone screens can cause nearsightedness, eye fatigue, dry irritated eyes, loss of focus flexibility, and computer vision syndrome. According to the Children's Hospital of Philadelphia, limiting screen time, fostering <clears throat> healthy sleep habits, and participating in healthy routine promotes proper eye health. We all feel terrible. What, what can, can we, we do about this? this? Well, if we got the solution for you. But my legs are like rubber. Exactly! Get fit with Shoe Bit! We have revolutionized the way you get fit. No more rubbery legs, gaining tons of weight, or bugging your eyes out. This health thing is really getting to me. With our patent pending product that is being filed for by this attorney here, we will be reminded to exercise by a friendly vibration in your shoes. But will it fit in my shoe? Yes, it will fit in your shoe. So what's this thing look like? I'm so glad you asked. We partnered with our local robotics company in Marshburg, Tennessee called DRM. We built it, tested it, and presented it to the experts. Let's take a look at the process. Hello, we are here at DRM and we're going to be going through the process of creating the shoe bit. We, we have members! Today we will be meeting with Mr. Barry Bryan and his team. Hi, we are the Rock and Robots and we are here to see Mr. Barry Braun. Barry, your guests are here. Hello folks, how can I help you today? We've come here today to talk about the shoe bit. It's part of our innovative research project. The shoe bit is inside the shoe, we're going to have the sole. And it's going to have a battery with two watch batteries inside. And then it's going to have a timer and a vibration motor. After a certain amount of time, the vibe the vibration motor is going to vibrate to remind you to get up and get active. That sounds great. Let's go. We chose these materials because they're readily available on Amazon. Do you think it'll work? Yes, I absolutely do. I think this is a great idea. We spent $31.22 on the materials for one shoe bit. How much do you think it would cost to manufacture? Well, once you miniaturize it and get into a circuit board, you could probably manufacture that for just a few dollars each. Can you think of any improvements on the shoe bit? I really think the biggest thing you're going to need to do to improve it is to get it miniaturized. Well, it looks like you got some parts with you. Y'all want to go build one together? Yes, we love to! 
So here is our battery. It has two watch batteries inside and it's already turned on. Here is our timer and here is our vibrating motor. And here's what we're gonna consider our heel switch. So you're gonna press it and then after 10 seconds, it's going to vibrate for three seconds. What do you think the retail price would be? It's just a little bit less than $20. I think you guys think it'll sell well. We're getting the word out about you, Ben. This is how we're getting the word out. Printing out flyers. Mentoring other teams. Giving out gifts. Making websites. And having fun. We are the Rock and Robot. Be fit, stay fit, the shoe bit. team is solving mysteries. That means we talk every day and identify what needs to be done for the week. Some days we work on missions and other times core values are innovation project like Mystery Inc. We look to identify problems and solve with solutions. Our favorite saying is, let's go jinkies! Discover! We have all learned a lot. We have been building with Legos for a while, but creating the game table missions and coding robot was all new. Even though our coach helped us, it took a team approach it to get things done. We, have, we had to use creativity to find solutions in the innovative project to rank the difficulties of what missions to do and how to code them. Impact. Since we are all related, we impact each other all the time. Innovation. Innovation. Using creativity and imagination to make something better was our favorite part. Inclusion. Inclusion. We worked together in all areas and decided to assign tasks based on each other's strengths and interests. We decided that our thing would be Scooby-Doo because we feel like the gang. We have worked and mentored the second grade explorer team, Mr. Inc. They will compete in March, but we are helping them learn how to code their we do 2.0 robot teamwork we are so lucky that all of us see each other every day and get along well each of us has unique strengths and abilities ava and lillian love art and building while i love to code and research although sometimes we struggled with different sections of coding the game table and the innovative project all of us believe in the golden rule and helped each other. Fun! The most fun that we had was creating the project and getting the missions done at the game table. We also enjoyed coding and getting ready for the competition! Hi, my name is Joseph and I am the coder of the Scooby Snaps. My job is to get the robot coded and show my team how to do the game table. Hi, I'm Lillian. I am in charge of making sure we had all of our information for the innovation project, help build the mission table, and support the team where needed. Hi, my name is Ava. I'm in charge of organizing, gathering research, and supporting where needed. I also make sure all of the missions are work correctly for the competition.
How are you? All right, R2. We're going to have to get these secret plans out to the kids. I think maybe we better take them to the Rebel Outpost to explain further. secret for you guys. This is something that we can't let anyone else know about, but I'm going to show you today. You know, I know all of your teams are working very hard to go through and to get ready for this challenge. But today I have for you secret plans that will prepare you to build your robot and to program it. You don't need a robot physically, but a website that I'm about to take you to will help you get the skills you need to program your robot for the missions that lie ahead. Good luck FLL teams, and remember, only you can be the change maker. All right, my young Jedis, we're gonna start out by going to this amazing software that's gonna teach you how to program your robot using software online. And the name of it's called AmazonFutureEngineer.com. We're just gonna go in through Google. You can put in Amazon Future Engineer. And once you go through and you research that, it's gonna be your first choice up here. Just go ahead, click on that. The picture that you'll see will look as a girl who's looking up. And what she's looking up at is the new virtual robotics link. Once you click on this particular link, you'll see the cyber robotics challenge. And that's where you need to go. You're going to go into student sign up and go ahead and sign up here. You won't need to have a an email or anything like that. So if you put your grade in, I don't know, I guess I'll say I'm in eighth grade. And how about this? I'm gonna be from Etheridge today. Oh, look, I put the name Etheridge in and Etheridge Elementary came up right away. And I'm gonna accept their terms and policy. It's a safe link, so you're, you'll be able to get to it from your Chromebooks. Now, once I've signed up, you're going to notice that it's going to give me a choice for a username. I've, my username is already in there, and so is my password. I'll tell you what, if you go down and you look here, it says already have an account. Well, I do, but in case you don't, you can go through and either fill out the username and password on this left side, or you can go on the right side and sign in with Clever, or you can sign with a Google account if you'd want as well. But for me, I'm already in the system, so I'm going to log in. And what you're going to notice is, for you, a movie will pop up, and that's going to be your welcome video. The second video that you're going to see is going to be getting started. And, and there you go. This second video is going to be really important for you to watch because this is going to basically set the groundwork and show you how to use the, the software and how to play the game. So look down here to the right hand side. Next activity, click on that. And that's going to bring you to Mission 1. Mission 1 says, Am uh, Welcome to the Amazon Fulfillment Center Robotics Training. Build and run your first code. So I'm going to go on there. You're going to notice that on the left-hand side are all the bricks, the same colors as you would use in the EV3 robotics classroom. Here is what our challenge is going to look like to start out with. This is Hercules, your robot, and your goal is to get him to the yellow square. Now that yellow square is going to change as you go through the different levels. On the left hand side you're going to see a palette just like you would see when you're programming your robot. In this particular case you're given a movement choice for movement bricks or data bricks. 
and if you look at the first thing we're going to do, I know my robot needs to go forward one to get to that brick. The yellow brick, that is. Anytime you start out any of your programs, you've got to give it what is called a hat or your program start block. This one doesn't quite look exactly like the one we see in the EV3 software, but it's pretty close. It says program start, good enough for me. So I'm going to connect this like a puzzle piece, and there you go. So let's see if that works. If I go up to the top here, and I see that arrow with, or I see a kind of a, a pointing to the to what would be my right side in a circle. Let's see, that's going to start us out. Congratulations, we did our first activity. Now I'm ready to go on to mission two. All right, so mission two, you're going to notice Hercules is a little bit further away. And they've not really given us anything here on the left-hand side. So I'm going to go through and start to take a look at what's to offer here on my bricks. I just went and I, I just clicked on my very first thing to do. It says, hey, do you understand what to do here? It says, need more blocks? Grab them from the library. Do you understand what that means? Well, yes, I do. So I've got a start block already and I know I'm going one ahead but if I go one ahead is that going to get me to my yellow brick? No. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and I think I'm going to drive another step and I want to go which direction? Well I'm going to go forward one. So if I go forward one here that's one and if I go forward again that's two so I'm going to start my program and I'm going ahead how many times? Drive one step once, drive another step, that makes twice. So let's see if that works. Well, there you go. We have successfully completed the first two missions. I'm going to go on to the next activity. I think you can kind of get the picture. It gets a little bit harder as time goes on. The nice part is they're going to give you little hints here to tell you how to deal with each different simulation. I'm not going to go to mission three because I think you get the picture and as you go through and start building your programs, you're going to learn a whole bunch about programming your robots. The great thing about this, guys, is this is the same exact software you're going to be using when you do the EV3 classroom with your robot at school for the competition. If you really like this, it goes up to, to much, much more challenging uh, programs that you'll write. It also goes to the next level of Coder Z, I believe it's 101, and that's where you have an EV3 robot and you put that in different missions. So if you guys eat this up and you're like, wow, I just got through this, I wanna go on to the next level, then you'll be able to go on to Coder Z 101. If you really enjoy using Coder Z, you know, it's not the only program that's going to help you learn how to code that robot. You can go to scratchcode.org or Hour of Code. All of these various websites use the same exact programming blocks that are used in our EV3 classroom. So don't worry if you're on remote or it turns out that maybe you missed a day of school. Or, or, or even if you just or, want to practice during the weekend coding. You go right ahead because all of these websites are accessible through your Chromebooks and you don't need to actually have a robot to touch. You can learn how to make everything move so that when you get back to school, you're able to program your robot for the missions that are needed. Well, I hope you enjoyed this. Good luck. I cannot wait to see what you all do. Take care. This is Miss Amory and I will see you again soon. Thanks. Bye-bye.
Godfrey, this is for coming from Anna Marie Lamprite to the Lawrence County School District office. So pay attention. Okay, uh, she wants to introduce you to a new robotics challenge that uses the first Lego League. It will include grades 6 to 8 throughout the district. And this following clip will provide an X of what it will look like. So pay close attention.
You and your class are being challenged to compete in the LEGO Robotics Together We Rise competition in May. Jedi training begins on March 23rd. You must train your young ones the ways of the LEGO Force in order to compete. The LCSS Empire is demanding your presence. Is your scroll. You will be receiving information on your email in the coming weeks. Good luck. The first place Jedi team will receive five hundred dollars. The second place Jedi team will receive two hundred fifty dollars, and third place will receive one hundred dollars. Choose your path wisely. May the force be with you. Today is Thursday, March 12th. Let's get ready for the morning announcements. Guess what, Eagles? Tomorrow is hat day. That's right. Miss Dillard and the third grade class are working hard to raise money to help all the schools that were affected by the tornadoes that hit last week. So feel free to don your wonderful hat on Friday. Just make sure you bring a dollar so that we can help all those kids who were affected by the tornadoes. And thanks for making Summertown Elementary a great place to be. Hi, I am Bella. Here is Ellie Lynn with our Spotlight Report. Hi, I'm Ellie. We are excited to spotlight awesomeness on campus. We would like to give a big thumbs up to Miss Crathen and the Wax Museum. That's right. It is time for a night at the Wax Museum on Thursday, March 12th. A big thumbs up to Miss Catherine and the Wax Museum. Keep up the good job making Summertown Elementary a great place to be. Now for the joke of the day. Where do planets get their music from? I don't know. Where? In Good one. Ha 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 ha. Hey everybody, this is Sherry O'Teary and um, I have the pleasure of announcing the lunch menu today. Uh, but since you uh, are, uh, you guys go to Summertown Ele Elementary, I am going to tell you to Summertown now and listen up to the menu. Okay? Now, first off, we've got barbecued pork or chicken sandwich, spicy fries, baked beans, fruit. And uh, manager choice, slaw, chilled mandarin oranges. Manager's choice again, fruit. Now the manager's choice is all stuff that's good for you. And if you want to keep your good teeth, you'll have the fruit instead of the fruit snacks. All right? And don't talk back. Do not talk back to Miss Anne Marie Lambrecht, because that would be lamp wrong. All right, now I want you to enjoy your lunch, but simmer down now. Summer town now, elementary. <laughs> All right, guys, have a great lunch, and um, I'm hungry. <laughs> Mwah. Hey, guys, it's Granger Smith. I'd like to wish a few Summertown Eagles a happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Eagles. Happy birthday to you. All right, that's it for morning announcements. Let's make today amazing. Goodbye, Eagles. Do your best and have a great day. Yee yee.
RADC is the Robotic Education and Competition Foundation's Aerial Drones Competition, where students build, program, and fly drones. My name is Dan Mance. I am the CEO of the Robotics Education and Competition Foundation. Our thought process behind RADC is to give a lower entry point for students that maybe weren't interested in mobile robotics, but wanted to do something that was technology-based. RADC is for those kids that really like playing maybe video games, having fun with electronics. It started out fifth grade, we started doing robotics, and we worked our way up to middle school, and we started doing drones last year. We do small activities together as a team, and that was one of the programs that we tried, was drone flying. It's helped us learn a lot for like future jobs and such. It's really hard to get a person up into inspect some of these really tall towers like a chimney stack or even one of these wind turbines. It's something that might be really, really dangerous for a person. You can fly a drone up and do a really great inspection of it. So there are so many different applications with this. I think our Rad C students like seeing things from the air, they like being able to maneuver, they like trying to weave through obstacles without crashing. What's your favorite part about Rad C? Definitely flying. I like the coding better. We both code and we both fly. He codes more. I code. He's funny and doesn't get stressed, so he's able to fly better and we both become better leaders and better at communicating. Well, they're learning a variety of skills from leader development, team building, how to be resilient, uh, communication, in addition to the technical skills of programming and coding, ensuring that they're able to get their drone off the ground and uh, communicating between their alliances. And so we want them to learn how to fly safe, and then when they get into the industry, now they can say, yes, I've done that, I know that's possible, I know that even exists, and so they get interested in that and will now pursue that kind of career. Thanks to RADC, we have met coding, and I think coding is a big part of our life because for the RADC, there's the autonomous mode in which it's all coding and we have learned how to code, me and Miguel. And I think I want to implement that in my future career choices as a software developer or web designer. It's still a competition, so they still learn to communicate with their teammates, to problem solve, and that skill transcends any industry. No matter what they do, collaborative, teamwork, problem solving skills are gonna help. So I think this is a great way to teach those important STEM and soft skills to our students.